Hello everyone. So today we will see C++ code on Fibonacci series. Uh, we will discuss three different sums on Fibonacci. First one will be to find the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, we will solve it in both the uh, approaches. First is recursive approach and the second is iterative approach. Then the second question we will solve is to print the first n Fibonacci numbers in the series. Okay and the third one will be to find the sum of first n fibonacci numbers okay so we will first start with uh, the question one that is to find the nth term of the fibonacci sequence in the recursive approach okay so for any recursive uh, approach we need a base condition so uh, if you know that uh, what is fibonacci series so Fibonacci series is uh, basically sum of a uh, previous two numbers giving rise to a third number <clears throat> Okay, so uh, Two fixed numbers are 0 and 1. So the next number will be addition of two numbers previous two numbers That is 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. So the third number is now 1 Now if you want to find the fourth number, we will have to add earlier two numbers that is second term and third term here third term is one and the second term is also one so the fourth term will be one plus one that is equal to two so in this way we will obtain whole of the uh, fibonacci sequence so let's see it so uh, this is the base case um, uh, wherein i have written where the uh, recursive call should stop and return okay so whenever the term is the first term or the second term we already know the answer because the first term will be zero and the second term will be one uh, that is what we are returning okay if there is a first term we are returning zero if it is second term we are returning two minus one one okay so this is our base case okay so in else condition if it is not the first term or not the second term we will go in the else condition and basically um, we have to add earlier two numbers so if uh, and any term is given to us uh, it will be addition of earlier two terms that is term minus one and term minus two which is what we are doing here and we are recursively calling it okay so uh, in this recursive approach first uh, whenever the function call will reach to this point it will again call itself it will again check, check the if condition it will uh, if uh, the term is one or two it will return it back or or else it will execute the else condition and again it will stop here again it will call itself and this process will continue until we get a, uh, until we get term is equal to one or two okay once we get term as one or two it will return to its previous function call okay so here the answer of the um, current uh, term will be uh, returned to this okay so the answer of this we got now the uh, code will move ahead and now it will reach uh, to this function call now this function call will again call itself it will uh, solve itself and once we get term one or two it will uh, we will have the value returned over here so now in this current uh, function call this function is getting executed we got uh, the answer of this function call as well as this function call when the answer of both the function calls uh, we get then only this value is returned to the earlier function call okay so this nth fibonacci sequence you have to visualize it okay nth fibonacci series nth number in fibonacci series how are you getting it by adding the n minus one term and the n minus second term that is what we are doing here and a recursion will um, solve afterwards okay this is the recursive equation we have to write to solve this okay so this is the um, recursive code to find the nth term of fibonacci sequence okay the time complexity of this code is 2 raised to n we will see it later on why is it 2 raised to n uh, now let's let's see its iterative approach its iterative approach is more um, 
good than recursive approach because its time complexity is big O of n. Okay, so here also I have done the same thing. If the term is one or two, we are returning term minus one. Uh, same thing as before. And next thing what we are doing is we are as it is an iterative um, approach, so we are taking a loop for loop. Uh, if it is first or second term, it will stop and return over here. If it is third term or any term greater than three, then it and this uh, loop will get executed. Uh, and um, in each loop in each iteration we are finding the current element by adding first and second element to it okay then we will get the current element after getting the current element we need to transfer um, the elements which is in second to first and which is in current to second so that it would be beneficial for us in the next iteration okay so after first iteration uh, again the uh, loop will be incremented um, now the f uh, again we will get the current value by adding the previous two values okay in this way uh, this loop will continue until we reach the last term uh, until i becomes equal to term okay this will continue towards that and and in the last iteration the the value in the current will be the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so when the last iteration uh, will be executed, it will come out of the for loop and we will return the value of current because it will contain the nth term of Fibonacci sequence. Okay, and then we can print it in uh, both iterative and uh, recursive approach. You will get the same uh, output, obviously but the time complexities are different we will discuss it later now let's see the second code to find uh, to print first n fibonacci sequence okay so how can we do it so to print it uh, we need to know first two uh, terms okay and we already know it it is predefined first one is zero and the second one is one we will again define a variable called as current we will uh, uh, take a loop from uh, one to term because we need to print all the terms starting from first term to the last term okay and uh, what i am printing i am always printing the first term okay first i am printing so first zero will be printed okay after the first uh, one is printed we will uh, find the current term current term will be uh, previous two terms here previous two terms we know first and second after adding it we will get one so the current term will be one now after finding the current term we will um, transfer the second term to the first term and the uh, current term to the second term okay now this loop will again be executed in the second iteration um, the value of first will be updated and that value will be printed uh, in the same fashion uh, this loop will be executed n times and we will uh, keep on updating those um, the value of current and uh, the value of first and second and so uh, in every next iteration we are printing the value of first okay so uh, we will exactly print first n fibonacci sequence okay so this is the code to print first n fibonacci numbers of the fibonacci series now let's see how to print the sum of first n fibonacci number okay so the condition initial condition remains the same uh, whether it is the first term then the answer will be 0 1 minus 1 if it is second term we know that 0 plus 1 is 1 and uh, this condition is satisfying that 2 minus 1 is also 1 so we will keep uh, this as it is okay that when uh, whether if the term is 1 or term is 0 then it can directly uh, return the value no need to uh, execute any loop in that case okay so for any term which is greater than or equal to 3 we will have to uh, execute this loop so that's why i am running it from i is equal to 3 to uh, i less than equal to term okay and here we already know uh, the value of first and the value of second okay 
and uh, the sum will be one how the sum will be one because uh, sum of first and second is already one that's why we need the initial value of sum because uh, in every passing iteration we will value the pre uh, we will add the previous sum to the current sum okay so we need the initial value of sum the initial value of sum will be one okay so in each uh, iteration we will uh, get the current value we will get the current value uh, by adding first and second element okay so we will get uh, we will add first and second element and get the current value uh, after getting the current value we will uh, transfer the second element to first and the current element to second um, as we have already calculated the value of current we will add the value of current to the previous calculated sum so that we will get the latest and updated sum uh, already so in each iteration we are calculating its sum by adding the value of previous sums to the current value um, of that particular term okay so in this way uh, we will finally calculate the value of sum and uh, we will return it and print it okay so this is all about uh, the three uh, fibonacci codes which i was going to discuss today um, so let's run the code and see how it is executing um, as i have written all the three codes in the same uh, one program um, and not separated out so we'll see it in one go okay so i am accepting here the term so i'll write a uh, nine term okay and click enter okay so here we, is, we are getting the answer of our um, first question that we solved that is the to find nth term of fibonacci series here the ninth term we are getting is 21 okay we can verify it uh, seeing this okay or else uh, we can verify it from here also these are the first nine terms okay we are printing the first nine terms over here okay and uh, here is our second question the sum of first nine terms if we sum these we will get the sum of these as 54 so this also we got as a solution to the second uh, question uh, here we are printing it so we have also printed it uh, this we have solved it in an iterative approach and this answer we got uh, this we solved it in a recursive approach and this uh, we have solved it in iterative approach now let's see about the space and time complexities of the nth term to find the fibonacci number now as, as you can see um, that um, if we consider this as t of n so this term is taking t of n minus 1 and this is taking t of n minus 2 okay and some constant uh, time is uh, we are taking to uh, uh, go through this if condition and to uh, execute the addition between uh, these two terms okay so some constant time we are taking so as i have said that uh, the equation will be t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2 plus c so uh, we can uh, use any of the methods to find it but but the best and the easiest method to find the uh, recursive um, what we say time complexity is by using the recursion tree method so as in the zeroth level c time is been taken okay as i have said if it is a zeroth level c time will be taken to you but uh, as you go downwards the single term will be broken down into two terms that is n minus one term and n minus second term now this term will require two calculations this term will require two calculations so in uh, level two we will need four times uh, calculations so the time will be two square into c in uh, first one it will be 2 raised to 1 into c 
so in as you can see a pattern over here if it is a first level the time will be 2 raised to 1 into c if it is second level the time will be 2 square into c uh, in such a way if it will be nth level then the time will be 2 raised to n into c okay so uh, and as you can see the maximum height the tree can reach uh, will be n okay so that's why we are taking 2 raised to n into c the time taken will be less than this 2 raised to n into c but uh, it will not matter because uh, anyways we have to take a uh, upper bound so we will consider 2 raised to n into c okay so when we add these uh, terms we will get uh, 2 raised to n minus 1 by 2 minus 1 this pattern is in gp so after applying the formula um, and sub um, neglecting all the constants we will get uh, the time complexity of uh, recursively solved nth term Fibonacci number as big O of 2 raised to n okay and the space complexity of uh, this will be big O of n um, this will be because the height of the tree at max would be n uh, which would also mean that um, at a particular time uh, the maximum element present in the stack would be n that is n functions call will be uh, stored in the stack that's why the space complexity would, would be big of n okay uh, and an iterative approach the time complexity would be big of n because um, in here we are just applying a loop uh, which will run um, n minus two times which will run n minus two times which is uh, approximately n times okay so the time complexity here will be big of n the time complexity to find uh, print of Fibonacci series will also be big of n just one loop is there uh, to find sum also the time complexity will be big of n okay so in this way uh, we saw uh, these three codes on Fibonacci series and as well as discusses space as well as time complexity okay so if you have any doubts do let me know uh, in the comment section below so that's it for now and um, thanks for watching and bye bye